Hey, what's up guys? Chris Jade here for CG Tuts, and in this tutorial we're going to be uh, building this mailbox model you see here, um, and we'll be going through the entire workflow, so we'll model it, UV map it, and uh, finally texture it. And as you can see, I chose to do a Canadian mailbox. Uh, that's just because I'm Canadian and I see these things all over the place, so I thought it might be uh, a good object to cover. All right, and if you look over here, you can actually see what the model looks like. Uh, it's really, really simple. I tried to keep it as light as I possibly could just to make the uh, mapping process a little quicker and easier to do. So uh, we'll just start with a box in Max and uh, define the shape, and then we'll uh, start looking at uh, where we need our seams and our separations to be, and we'll just add edge loops and start uh, detaching pieces of our box to create our separate uh, objects. And then it'll just be a process of uh, kind of going over each piece, fine-tuning it, adding some thickness, chamfering down the edges, uh, and so on. And uh, we'll do the top and the body, and then we'll move on to the front and start creating the doors here. And there's three of them, and they're really, really simple as well. Um, it's really just what you can see here, just the face of each door. Um, there's nothing on the inside, there's no back, there's nothing on the sides. So it's pretty quick, and it won't take too long to do. Um, once we get the upper portion done, we'll move down and actually start working on the base down here build that in and then it'll just be uh, a matter of going in and adding the uh, little detail pieces like the uh, keyhole, this door up on the top here and then the legs and the feet at the bottom. Uh, and with our model done we'll start uh, actually unwrapping it and for the mapping on this I'm going to be doing some of it inside of Max using the unwrap UVW modifier uh, but I will be exporting a few of the pieces actually out of Max and taking them into the uh, demo version of Hedis UV layout. Uh, and that's just because I think it's going to be a little quicker to do some of the pieces inside of there. Um, I've been using the demo version for a couple of months now, and uh, I actually really, really like it. Uh, I think it's a lot faster, um, depending on what you're doing, than doing your mapping in Max. So, yeah, I'll be using a combination of uh, both, and uh, when we get to that point, I'll give you the URL where you can download the trial version if you want to actually uh, take it yourself and uh, follow along. Okay, so once we get uh, everything flattened out and mapped, we'll just... Uh, organize our UVs, figure out how we want to have everything laid out for uh, Photoshop, and then uh, we'll just uh, scale everything, try to keep an even resolution and uh, pixel density over the entire uh, texture space, and uh, we'll just manually pack them, uh, render out a little UV template to take into Photoshop to help uh, us define where our edges are and uh, where we need our damage and so on. Uh, and then uh, we'll move over to Photoshop. Uh, before we do that though, we will uh, render out a quick ambient occlusion pass from Max uh, just to help uh, add some depth to our, uh, our texture maps. All right, and then we'll move into Photoshop and start creating the diffuse. Um, and it's not insane. Uh, it'll be about 25, maybe 30 layers when we get it done. And uh, we'll just go through the process of you know creating the paint, adding a bunch of dirt and grime and uh, crap to it. And then uh, we'll paint in a lot of these dings and scratches manually and uh, add all the text and the logos and all that stuff. You can see that this actually has some French on it. Um, and I don't speak French at all myself, so uh, I wasn't going to put it on, but I just decided to because the uh, the real ones do actually have both English and French. So in an attempt to keep it a little more authentic looking, I thought I'd just add that stuff anyway. And then with the uh, diffuse map uh, made, we'll just uh, start working on the bump map, make that, and then uh, finally we'll create the spec map. Um, I'm not going to go over the rendering uh, process or lighting in this tutorial, but I, I will t show you how to actually set the shader up inside of Max before we finish. Um, and I'll be using Max 9 for this uh, and the demo version of Hedis UV Layout. And again, I'll give the URL where you can find that when we get to that uh, part of the tutorial. And I'll just be using Photoshop CS4. Um, it doesn't matter if you have CS4, any version will work. Uh, we're not doing anything too fancy, so it shouldn't be a problem. All right, so let's uh, jump over to Max and actually start uh, working on the model. Okay, so to get started off here, I'm just going to open up a couple of uh, reference images. So into the uh, Utilities tab, open up the Asset Browser, and I just have four here that I found online. And uh, if you'd like to actually have these pictures to work with, you can download them from the uh, tutorial section of my personal website, which is chrisstateonline.com. All right, so I got these four. Um, I think we'll just use the first two for now. All right, so we'll open up this guy here and this one because we can see the full height of the box. All right, and let's just close that. All right, so let's take a look. All right, and it's fairly simple. Um, there's not a lot of detail on it um, besides the front piece here. So uh, what I might do is just start with a box, and then we'll uh, kind of divide it up and just start breaking pieces off to get the separate panels and the uh, doors on the front and uh, so on. Okay, so let's just go over to the create panel grab box, and in the top view, I'm just going to drag one out. All right, we'll tweak the size in a second. Let's just get it in there, and I'm going to make sure it's centered to the origin by right-clicking on the uh, Move tool, and just right-click on the spinners to zero them all out. Okay, and let's jump into perspective. And you can uh, maximize your viewport windows uh, by hitting Alt W. All right, so let's uh, 
Open the picture up here. Alright, and this doesn't really look like it's square. I'm not sure if it is or not, but uh, I think we'll just make our square to make it a little quicker. Um, and we'll kind of have to guess at the sizes here, so let's go into the uh, Modify panel. And I'm going to be using max generic units for this. Alright, and if you want to check uh, what your unit setup is, you can just do that in the uh, Customize uh, menu under Unit Setup. Alright, and I just have generic ticked here. Okay. Alright, so let's just make it uh, maybe 100 on the length. And we'll do 100 on the width. Alright, the height we can probably do, I don't know, 200 or let's try maybe 225. Let's see how that looks. Alright, so that's probably okay for a starting point. Okay, so we'll do 100 by 100 by 225 high. Alright, so before we actually start going here, let's uh, jump back out. And I'm just going to set up my scene quickly. So I'm going to turn my grids off of G in each view. Alright, turn the smooth and edge faces on, F3 and F4 in each view. Alright, and I'm going to turn off the selection brackets as well by hitting J. Okay, and that's all personal preference. Uh, you can leave that stuff on if it doesn't bother you. Alright, so another thing I always do is make my mesh color black, so I'm just going to do that quickly. Open up the material editor by hitting M, and just drag and drop a standard gray shader onto the model. Okay, again, that's personal preference. Alright, so let's just uh, right click and convert our box to edible poly. Okay, and I'm just going to jump into the left view here and go to vertex. And we just want to get the slanted top here, so let's grab these two verts on the uh, right top corner in the left view and just move them up. Check it out in perspective. Alright, just something like that. And uh, we can turn off vertex. Alright, so I think what we'll do is we'll just add some edge loops in here and start kind of blocking out where the pieces will be and then we'll detach some of the stuff to make separate pieces. Okay, so let's start up at the top and we'll actually uh, add an edge loop in there for that bottom edge. Okay, so let's go to edge and just drag through the corners and we'll do a connect. Alright, one segment, uh, no pinch and I'm just going to slide it up closer to the top. Alright, 93 is probably good and we'll say okay. Alright, and let's look at our other reference picture here. Alright, so I'm just going to add a couple more loops here just to block in where these sides are. Alright, so let's grab this top edge and do a ring that way and a connect. Okay, and this time we'll do two segments. I'm just going to zero out the slide by right clicking the spinner. And we'll just pinch them apart. Alright, let's do maybe uh, 73 or so on the pinch and okay. Alright, just like that. And let's figure out where the base needs to be. Okay, so I'm going to drag through again. And we'll do a connect. Alright, this time we'll use one, no pinch, and we'll just slide this loop down a bit. Figure out where it should uh, start. Go down a little bit. Alright, let's just say negative 27 on the slide and okay. Alright, and you can see our loops bent here because of the angled top, so let's straighten it out. So I'm just going to control click vertex to uh, convert to a vert selection, and we'll just straighten the loop out. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either use scale, and just scale down a couple times on the Z until they all go even. Or you can use the uh, make planar options down in the edit poly rollout under here. Um, next to make planar, you can just hit Z, and it'll straighten them all out for you. Okay. So I might just move this up just a tiny bit. Alright, that's probably close enough. Alright, so let's go back up to the top of the rollout and just go to Polygon. And we'll just start separating some of the pieces out. Okay, so I'm just going to drag through the uh, top half and then hold Alt and deselect the sides. Alright, just make sure you don't have back facing turned on when you do that. Alright, we're just looking for the top 11 polys. And to uh, separate it out, we'll just use Detach. So let's go down and open that up. Right, and we don't need to do an element or a clone, so we'll leave these both unticked, and we'll just change the name to uh, Top, and hit OK. All right, just to break it off, and let's open up the Material Editor again, FM, and I'm just going to make a new shader that's maybe blue, or whatever color you like, and I'm just going to drag that over and drop it on the top. All right, that'll make it a little easier just to you know see our separation and tell where our pieces are. Okay, so let's do the same thing with the bottom. All right, so still on Polygon, I'm just going to drag through the bottom, and detach, 
And same thing here, we'll leave these both unticked and we'll just put a name in. So let's call it base and OK. All right, and if you want to, you can just put the blue on there as well. All right, so for the front here, um, if you look in the reference, you can see that a lot of these door pieces actually recess in. Okay, so I think we should probably punch this face in just so we have some depth. Okay, so let's select this guy here and we'll just open up extrude and just take it down to a negative amount and push it in. All right, it probably doesn't have to be a lot. Let's do maybe, we'll just say negative seven. That's probably cool. And we'll do it on group and okay. All right, just like that. All right, and we don't really need this face down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna select it and just hit delete, get rid of it. And the one at the top as well, select that guy, delete. All right, and let's grab this front face and I'm just gonna hit control I to invert the uh, poly selection and we'll just detach this body piece. All right, so detach, and we'll just call it body, and hit OK. All right, so we basically just have four separate pieces. All right. Okay, so before we actually start detailing them, let's maybe do a save. I'm just gonna make a new folder here, just call it mailbox or whatever you like. All right, copy the name out. Just save a copy. All right, so let's turn off polygon here, and I'm just going to select the top, and we'll start with this piece and just work our way down. Okay, so with the top selected, I'm going to go into isolation mode with Alt Q. Okay, and we still have these two uh, edge loops running across the top here. We don't really need those guys, so let's uh, go to edge and just select these two, holding Control, and we'll hit loop, and then we'll hit Control backspace to remove the edges and birds. All right, just like that, um, and you can see up here that there's a seam uh, between the two panels. You can probably see it better on this one. Yeah, right here, okay. So um, I don't want to leave the bottom just open and hollow like that. So I think I'm just going to add some thickness to the bottom edge just in case you know you can see in there when you render it. Okay, so let's uh, go to border, select the bottom border, and I'm just going to hit cap. All right, and I'm going to go to polygon and just select that bottom poly. And we'll just inset this. So let's open up inset. And uh, we'll just go up maybe one and a half or so, that's probably fine, and say okay. Okay, and then we'll delete this face by hitting delete. All right, just like that. All right, so we'll start rolling over some of the edges here. Let's go to edge, and I think I'll start on the front top corner, edge right there, all right? And you can see on the reference picture, it's, it's pretty rounded over, um, and the other ones are, are quite a bit harder than that. So we'll just do this one separately. So let's uh, select it, open up chamfer, all right, and we'll just roll it over a bit, so let's take it up. Let's do like two maybe, and then we'll hit apply, and just lower down the second amount to roll it over. All right, maybe 0.68 on the second one, and okay. And then let's go around to the back and select that back top edge, and we'll just chamfer this one. Let's just do maybe a 0 0.65 on that one, and we'll do a single. So just hit OK. All right, just like that. And then I'm just going to hit Control I to invert the uh, selection. All right, sorry about that. And uh, we'll just hold Alt and just drag through these top ones here that we rounded over. Okay, we don't need to do those guys again. I'm just going to minimize this. All right, and let's go around to the bottom. And we don't really need to do this inner border edge either. So let's just hold Alt and just deselect these four that are around the opening. Okay, and we'll leave the corner loop selected. All right, and we'll just do all these guys at once. All right, so let's do a chamfer. And it might just take this down just a little bit more. All right, you can always turn your edges off of F4 to get a better idea of how it looks. All right, so 0 0.5 is probably cool, so we'll just say okay. Turn off edge and exit isolation mode. All right, so I'm just gonna hit Z to center of the model, and we'll just take a look here. And that's probably fine. Again, it's really, really simple. Okay, so we'll just repeat the process on the uh, body piece. So let's select that, go into isolation mode, Alt-Q, and uh, we'll add some thickness here as well. I'm just going to take out these two extra edges. We don't need them. So let's go to edge, just select one, control click the other, control backspace. All right, so to get the uh, thickness on here, I think it's probably quickest to add just a shell modifier to it, so let's uh, go into the modifiers, down to uh, shell, 
function, right? And by default, it's going to add one to the outer amount, and that's not going to work in our case because it's going to not match the uh, outside of our top if we do that, as you can see here. All right, it's sticking out, so let's just zero out the outer amount, and we'll put 1.5 in the inner amount, okay? So it matches our top. All right, let's go in isolation mode again, Alt Q. All right, just like that. Okay, and you'll notice the corners aren't straight here. Okay, so if that if that happens to you when you're using the shell modifier, you can just tick on straighten corners down at the bottom of the rollout, and it'll even everything out for you, straighten it up. Okay, so we'll do that, and let's convert a tedible poly. All right, and again, we don't really need the extra faces on the inside, so let's go to polygon, and I'm just going to turn on ignore back facing. All right, and we'll just go into the inside here, and I'm just going to delete everything that you won't be able to see when we're done. Okay, so I'm going to start on the skinny one here, and just hold control and just work my way around the inside. Just selecting them. All right, get these ones over here. Okay, just those nine, and we'll hit delete. All right, so let's go to edge and just grab one of the corner edges, and we'll do a ring, and we'll also hit loop. Okay, and let's exit isolation mode for a second. All right, so let's chamfer. And I think we did 0.5 on those other ones there. At the top, so let's just take this down. We'll kind of match it. All right, so it's 0.5 on these guys, and we'll say OK. And then let's invert the edge selection. Actually, hang on. I'm just going to go into uh, isolation mode for a second. We don't really need to uh, chamfer this, this edge down around the inside, so let's just select that one there. Control click the bottom one, and we'll just use loop here. Okay, and it should go all the way around. And just stop on the inside corner on both sides. Okay, and now we'll exit isolation mode and chamfer. All right, I'm just going to tighten this one up a little bit. I don't think it needs to be that wide. Just going to hit side. All right, so we'll do uh, 0 0.25 on these guys, and okay. All right. Uh, Exit edge and just take a look here. I'm just going to toggle my edges off F4. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, that should be fine. All right, so again, really simple, but uh, I don't think we really need to do any uh, more than that. All right, so before we start working on the actual detailed face part, let's uh, maybe do another save. Alright, so let's just take another look at our reference here. Okay, so it looks like the face of it is made up of uh, three different doors. Alright, we got the top one there with the flap that you actually open to put the mail in, and then we have these two down here, which I guess they open up to empty the box. Alright, so I think what we'll do is we'll just use the existing face we still have here, and we'll just break it up into three separate pieces and just modify each one into these shapes that we need. Okay, and we'll also have this little slot we have to add on there too. All right, so let's just select that face, go to edge, and I'm just going to drag through, grab both uh, side edges, okay, and we'll just do a connect. All right, and we'll figure out where we need to separate this top door here. All right, so we'll do one segment, no pinch, and I'm just going to slide the loop up. All right, I'm going to break it right here. Uh, so let's do maybe, we'll do negative uh, 45 on the slide for now, and okay. And we can always adjust the height if we need to after. Okay, so we'll do that, and then we'll just repeat the process down here. All right, so grab those two, connect, and this one. It's kind of hard to tell if these are even in height. They look pretty close to each other, so we could break it right in the center like that, but I think I might just go up a little bit, just slightly. All right, we'll just do five for now on the slide, and okay. All right, and let's start detaching these from each other. So let's go to Polygon, select the top, and we'll just use Detach again. Again, we don't want to have anything ticked here, and I'm just going to change the name to, uh, I don't know, Top Door, and OK. All right, and then we'll do the same thing with the middle one, Detach, and we'll just call this Middle Door, and OK. And we can turn off Polygon. All right, so we're just left with this bottom face, so I'm just going to change the name to uh, Bottom Door. All right, just like that. All right, so before we actually start detailing anything, I'm just going to do another save, just in case we have to come back. All right, save another copy. Okay, so let's start on the, the top door. So I'm just going to select that, and let's open up our reference again. All right, so it's 
going to be a little harder to judge from this angle. I might actually use this side profile type of shot just because you can see the uh, the shape of the door, the profile, a little easier. Okay, so first thing I do though is just get this so it's flush again with the uh, the body. All right. So let's go to polygon and with that face selected, I'm just going to extrude it back out so it'll be flush again. All right. So let's open up extrude and we want to do uh, positive seven. So I'm just going to take the uh, minus out backspace it and hit OK. Alright, just to get it back so it's flush with the surface. And let's go into isolation mode again with Alt Q. Alright, and I'm going to try to keep these pieces really, really simple. So I'm not going to add a side to them or anything on the inside because I don't think it's really necessary and you're never going to see it. Um, and we're not going to open ours up or anything. So let's just select the top polygon and both side polys holding control and just delete them with delete. Alright, so it's going to go to edge. Select the top edge and let's exit isolation mode. Alright, I'm just going to pull the edge down All right, quite a bit. And I'm just going to go to where I figure this edge right here is. Alright, and we can adjust after if we have to. So we'll just pull it down like this. Um, we're going to have to allow a little bit of space at the top to add this little door on the slot up here. So we'll do something like that. And I'm just going to go into the left view. Alright, into wireframe. F3. Alright, and uh, for this I'm just going to use shift drag um, to clone the edges and make new polys. Um, you could do it with a spline if you'd prefer to do it that way. You could just draw the profile and then just extrude to get the, the faces, but uh, I'm going to use the shift drag technique. Alright, so with that edge still selected in the left view, I'm just going to start trying to create this little uh, indentation here. Okay. And we'll just kind of get it blocked in, and then we can go back and fine tune it if we want to. Okay, so I'm going to hold down Shift and just drag that edge in a bit. Let go, and then Shift and up on the Y. And then we'll go back out. And I'm just going to go back out to about this edge right here. And we'll go up a little bit. And then we're going to have to go back in to create the slanted face here. So Shift, drag again. And uh, we'll just do it something like that maybe. And don't worry about getting it perfect, we can always adjust after until we're happy with it. Alright, so we're actually going to have to start bringing the, the handle piece out, so let's uh, shift drag out, and I'm going to go down on a bit of an angle. Okay, and we'll start making the little lip piece that you'd actually grab onto. Alright, so we'll go down, and in, down again, and back out, alright, and up. Alright, and then we'll just go back. And I'm just going to go back to maybe this back edge right here. Okay, and we really don't need to continue on and do anything on the inside because you're probably never going to be able to see that we have the little door blocking it. But uh, if you want to be safe, you can just, you know, maybe extend that. But it's probably really not necessary because I don't think you'd see it either way. But I'll just do it like this to be safe. Alright, so let's jump out in perspective and see how it looks. Alright, it's not too bad. I'm just going to minimize these so they're not in our way. Alright, and we're just going to have to be careful here that we don't leave it sticking out too far um, because we're not going to have sides on it. Um, you'll notice that it's like, uh, you know, just a single face and it'll look kind of weird because it's so thin. Um, so I might push this back in a little bit after. But let's just uh, make sure the shape's the way we want it. Alright, I'm just going to go in isolation mode, Alt Q. Let's just open this up again. Alright, so down here on the little indentation, it looks like this one actually has quite a slant on it. Alright, so I'm just going to adjust that. I'm just going to go to edge and just select the bottom edge, and I might take the top one too, holding control. Alright, and I'm just going to move them up a little bit. Alright, can always check in the left view. Alright, so I'm just going to move them up, I think. Just like that, okay. This might not be exact to the reference, but that's okay. Um, we'll round over some of the edges after we get them uh, where we want them. All right, just looking up at the top here. All right, that actually might be okay, just like that. Um, you can play around with it if you want to uh, fine-tune it more, but I think just for the sake of uh, speed, I'll just leave it like this, and uh, we'll start rounding over some of the edges on it. Okay, so 
start up here on the top of the handle and uh, we'll just grab this guy okay and you can see here it's fairly hard um, so let's do a chamfer on this alright and we'll take it down doesn't need to be probably a lot alright we'll just do uh, 0 0.25 on that one and okay and then down at the bottom of this piece I'm going to take this one here and chamfer again and it might tighten this one up just slightly Alright, let's do uh, 0.15 on that guy, and OK. And I'm just going to put the blue color on here to make it a little easier to see. Alright, so we'll go around to the back. And I know this is a little awkward. Alright, so the ones on the inside of the handle here, you probably never see them, but I think I'll just chamfer them all at the same time. Alright, so we'll grab these two on the back, this one here, this one here. Okay, those four, and we'll just chamfer. And lower it down. Or maybe uh, 0 0.06 should be fine and okay and again you're never gonna see it so you don't have to worry too much about it and we'll do the same with this one up here on the top of the slanted piece we'll just chain for that and I'm just gonna take that one up a little bit right, we'll do point 0.1 on that one and okay and we'll go down here to the uh, edge of the indentation and it looks fairly hard there let's grab this one and I think I'm gonna grab the one right here too Alright, just those two, and let's chamfer. Alright, so I'm just going to take these ones up. And again, you can always hit F4. Turn off your edges just so you can get a better idea. Alright, so let's do uh, 0 0.15 on those ones, and OK. And then let's zoom in here. And I'm just going to take these two guys, and this one here. And we'll do all three at once. Alright, so chamfer again, and I'm just going to tighten these ones up just slightly. Alright, maybe uh, 0 0.12 on those ones, and OK. And then we'll go down and do the last one at the bottom here. Alright, I might roll this one over just a little more, so let's uh, chamfer. We'll go up a bit on this. Let's do maybe. Let's do point 0.3 or so, and let's hit apply, and just lower this down a bit. Alright, we'll do point 0.11, and OK. Alright, so pretty simple. Um, let's exit edge, and exit isolation mode, and just see how it looks. I'm just going to hit Z. Alright, so we're obviously going to have to uh, pull the top up. We have way too much space here. Alright, so let's select it again, and I'm just going to go into the left view. Alright, and we'll go to vertex, and I'm just going to grab all the verts on the top, half of it, the handle, and everything else, okay, and in perspective, I'm just going to yank this up a bit, make it a little taller. Alright, that's probably okay. Again, um, feel free to, you know, tweak it a little more if you want to. Okay, so let's exit uh, Vertex, and like I mentioned, I'm just going to push it in to make sure you can't see the outside edge here. So let's center the pivot on it first, so I'm going to go to the Hierarch tab, Effect Pivot Only, Center Object, and then turn it off. Alright, and we'll just move this in on the Y just a bit, just to hide the sides. Right. Maybe just like that. Okay. Alright, so I think that's all we really need to do for this piece right now. Okay, so we'll just uh, continue on and start working on this one here. And we'll do it the same way. Alright, but first I'm just going to do a save. Let's select the uh, middle door piece there. Alright, and we'll go into the uh, modify panel, polygon again. And with that selected, I'm just going to extrude it out, just like we did on the first one. Alright, take out the minus, backspace it, hit enter and hit OK. Alright, so for this one, let's take a look at our other one here. Alright, it's pretty uh, pretty simple up here and then down at the bottom it just looks like it goes in and then kind of comes down on an angle and it has this little lip detail. Alright, so this one's not going to be as bad as the top one to do. Alright, so first thing I do is just go into isolation mode again. 
Alt Q, and this time I'm going to delete the side polys and the bottom poly, and we'll leave the front face and the top. Okay, so delete, and then I'm going to select the bottom edge, and we'll go out of isolation mode. Okay, and I'm just going to drag this one up a little bit. All right, just to allow a little space for this detail here. Okay, and then let's jump into the left view. And we'll just do this the same way. All right, so with that edge still selected. All right, just open up our other picture there. All right, so you can't really tell. It looks like it just goes in, so I think I'm just going to pull it straight in, holding shift, and I'll just move it on the X. And we'll go in a bit. Okay, and then we'll go down. A bit of an angle, maybe like that. And you can see the little lip detail doesn't go all the way to the edge. Okay, so we'll just go out and we'll stop just short. Maybe at this edge here and then down. And then back in. And I'm going to go all the way to the back edge. Okay, just like that. Check it out. Okay, just going to check the other picture here. So what I might do, it looks to me like the little uh, lip detail might be slightly angled, so let's grab this edge and just move it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot, maybe just like that, okay? And let's check our other one again. Alright, so we're fairly close. Um, again, take more time. And I'm just going to go to Vertex and just move these three ones just in a little bit. Alright, just to leave a little bit of space for that reveal, and let's grab the one at the top of the slanted piece and just pull it back a bit. Alright, just like that. Okay, and I think that's close enough. Alright, so let's go into isolation mode. Just gonna exit vertex first. Alright, so Alt Q. Alright, so we'll just start uh, softening up some of the edges. Let's open up our front view of this. Alright, so let's grab the top corner there and we'll chamfer. Alright, take it down a bit. Alright, let's just do uh, 0 0.35 on that one and OK. We can probably do the same on this one here. So chamfer again, and we'll do 0.35 and OK. All right, and the ones down in here, they look pretty sharp. It's got pretty hard edges, so let's grab this one at the top of the slanted piece, and the one at the bottom of it, holding control, and we'll just do these both at the same time and just lower the amount down. We'll do these ones pretty hard. Let's do maybe 0.2 and OK, and then we'll grab the two ones on the outside of the lip detail, and we'll just chant for these. Alright, I'm gonna go up a little bit here. It looks like it's rounded over pretty good, so let's do 0.25, hit apply, and just lower this down. Alright, we'll just do 0.1 on the second amount, and okay. Alright, exit edge, exit isolation mode. Okay, and we'll just take a look. Right, let's throw the blue on there while we're at it. So that's, that's not looking too bad. I think we're close. Okay. So really simple and quick. Alright, so we'll move on to the third door now. Let's just do a save first.